Facebook. Just wanted to uh, speak to you today a little bit. Um, I'll just wait a couple minutes here till some people get on. Uh, we got an upcoming conference coming in January, January 22nd to 23rd. Uh, the revealing. You can get on the base website and take a look. Um, also, we have a new base app that's out. Uh, that uh, people are starting to access. We're getting ready to put our podcast on. And in January, we're also going to be starting Kingdom uh, Discipling Hubs in the state of Iowa. And if you're in Iowa and interested in doing um, starting a discipling hub, just let us know and we can work with you in that. I've got a two or three people interested right now and some others connecting. And, and so we're going to try to uh, change regions and cities neighborhoods and all of that through some of these discipling hubs that bring us into greater kingdom understanding. But today what I want to share about is what are you carrying? And in Romans eleven twenty nine it says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Many of us are carrying uh, things that God has deposited inside of us that are great treasures. But I think we struggle sometimes with understanding exactly what I am carrying in places I go, they do ask at times, what are you carrying? In other words, what do you have to add to what we already are doing? Or what are you bringing into a region or a meeting even that uh, you know God has placed something inside of you? And I'm going to just very simply talk about three things today. Your calling, your gifting, and your ministry. These are three things that we're all carrying today. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. The word chosen means the hand picking of God. And God calls a tremendous amount of people to come and work for him, to come do ministry, to come do exploits, to uh, just do simple things of serving even. But uh, in that, he hand picks people and he hand picks based on our obedience and our yieldedness and our willingness. So what is your calling exactly? Well, what you were born to do in God. In other words, it is the mission of your life. Many of us are carrying a mission of why our life was uh, put upon the earth and what we are to do with our life. Now, calling can be a fivefold grace and the fourfold function of Ephesians 4. Uh, it could also be uh, a calling outside of those graces with a different type of grace, such as the calling to be a worship leader or an administrator, or a business person, or a missionary, or an exhorter, or just one that comes alongside and encourages, maybe an under-shepherd. All of these are different types of callings that we have. Some have callings to help homeless people. Some have callings in addiction uh, recovery. But nonetheless, those are all callings, and those are things that you were born to do with God. That, that is part of the DNA of your mission. Maybe you've been called to uh, a certain task or an assignment that your whole life is preparing you for that moment, much like a president of a nation. Uh, so all of us are carrying a direct calling from God. Now, whether we activate that calling or not is determined upon us engaging into it and understanding we're carrying it. The second thing is your gifting. And gifting is different than calling because gifting is a potential or an enablement that God has supernaturally empowered you with. In other words, a gifting is not your own natural abilities, but it's a supernatural ability that God gives you that becomes natural, naturally moving in a unique spiritual gift. And the gifting is uh, can be something along these lines. It can be, I, I have a supernatural love for people. I have a supernatural ability to father people, to love the unlovely. Uh, it can be a unique gifting of spiritual fathering because spiritual fathering requires a gift to be able to do it. Uh, a gift to be able to listen to people is another gifting that you might have. A gifting to be a revelatory type teacher or have a unique ministry style or a unique way of laying on of hands. To be a seer and see into the prophetic realm to interpret dreams. All of these kinds of things are unique giftings, and they all come by the by the Holy Spirit empowering us and enabling us. And you're carrying gifting right now. So you're carrying calling, 
and you're carrying gifting. Now, the other thing that you're also carrying is ministry. And the word ministry means serving. So ministry is how you serve others in your gifting and calling. This is how where you become obedient and start to yield to the calling and, and let the gifting create things around you. This is going to be the place of expression of your gifting and your calling. So all leaders that are leading a ministry, those ministries will take on the expression of that leader's calling and that leader's gifting. As that ministry grows and they make room for more people in that ministry to have expression, that ministry takes on also their giftings and their callings. And it becomes the place of the expression of gifting and callings, not just in a leader, but also in those that are part of that ministry. So it becomes a place that people come to receive from. They are drawn to that place to receive gifting and calling and see ministry perform. And so it becomes the fruitfulness of calling and gifting. Now, all of us have calling and gifting. We all have the ability to carry these things, but it's back to many are called, few are chosen. Many have a divine invitation from God to come fulfill their mission of their life, to come embrace the giftings they carry and activate them so ministry can flow. The gifts and callings are without repentance, meaning God gives all of us gifts and callings. He gives all of us the ability to perform ministry. Part of the fivefold function we see in Ephesians 4 is that we are to perfect the saints to do the work of the ministry. So for saints to do the work of the ministry, we come back to the beginning again. Part of the role of all fivefold leaders is to help people find the calling they carry, to help them find the giftings they carry and to see those giftings, and then to help them find expressions of gifting and calling as they do ministry. It's not just saying, here's some gifts, go do this. It's like the you have to have confidence in what you carry. For myself, I know what I carry. I know I carry a revelatory gift to the body of Christ. I know I have a calling into the body of Christ. I know that I have a ministry to heal brokenheartedness. I know I have a ministry of a revelatory teacher. I know what I'm carrying, and because I know what I'm carrying, it gives me confidence in what I do in life, in ministry, do upon the earth, all of those kinds of things. The best example that I can kind of give as a broad overview of this, or a broad paintbrush of it, is in Acts chapter 12 where we see that Peter is in jail and we see that John has been beheaded, but Peter is carrying calling, gifting, and ministry. Peter had a promise from God, that uh, from Jesus, that he would live in old age. So as he's sitting in jail, he's not concerned about his circumstances because he knows what he is carrying. He knows he has a calling upon the earth to fulfill. He knows he has giftings to fulfill the calling, and there's a ministry awaiting him. So as he's sitting there in jail, he's resting and he's asleep and he's resting in his calling. He's resting in his giftings. He's resting in the ministry and he knows that his life is not finished. He knows what he's carrying. And we all know that the angel of the Lord came and smote him, woke him up. He goes and finds those, the gates of the city open up, to the, the gates of the prison open, the gates of the city open. He goes out into the city. He finds those that have been praying. He finds the ecclesia. The ecclesia knew what they were carrying. They knew they had authority to get Peter out of jail. He knocks on the door. They say it's his angel. You can go back and read it in Acts 12. I want you to start to think about this story in a different light. At times I would tell this story to people and say what was in jail was revelation and revelation was uh, was awakened and revelation came into a city and revelation found the church, the ecclesia, and revelation knocked on the door and was welcomed in. What also is also happening though is calling. Calling is locked up in prison. Gifting is locked up in prison. Ministry is locked up in prison. Prisons that men have built, prisons of the imagination, prisons of the mind, prisons of not allowing people to be free and be who they are. And the angel of the Lord came and awakened the calling 
and awaken the giftings and awaken the ministry that was setting in Peter. And Peter was released out of his bondage. And as is, he was released out of his bondage, he went and found the ecclesia that was praying for him. And what we're, I could look at it like this. They weren't just praying for Peter. They were praying for what Peter was carrying. They were praying for the calling of Peter, the giftings of Peter, and the ministry of Peter to not be no longer bound in a prison, but to be set free. I learned this in a personal way when I was on my deathbed a couple years ago in the hospital. I was literally, my body was wasting away. And people were praying, thousands of people, many of you viewing this, were praying for me. And yet it wasn't, I wasn't getting better. And the Lord told me, he said, don't pray for you to get healed. Pray that the message inside you doesn't get lost. In other words, if you know what you're carrying, you have to have them start praying for what you're carrying. That Because what we carry is eternal. The calling is eternal. The giftings are eternal. The ministry we do is eternal. The Lord said, have them pray for what is eternal setting inside of you that it doesn't get lost. And as they did that, that which they were calling forth, the deposits inside of me, and my body had to conform to carry the great deposits that were given. Perhaps maybe we pray amiss at times for our own selfishness. And I know that many of us might be fighting sickness and things at times, and maybe even right now, but there's something that you're carrying that that sickness has came to attack you. Maybe there's uh, depression, loneliness, isolation setting inside of you today, but you know also you have calling and gifting and ministry setting inside you. Call forth that great deposit inside of you. Call forth those things inside of you to come forth and start asking God to show you exactly the great things you are carrying in your life. Allow those things to come forth and allow them to no longer be bound in prisons, no longer be restricted by what men would say about you or what they would try to put you into bondage in. Rest in your calling, rest in your gifting, rest in the ministry you have, but realize there's coming a day, maybe it's even perhaps the day where God is going to send the angel of the Lord to smite you. And that means that he's going to punch you to wake you out of your sleep and slumber so that you become who he wants you to be upon the earth and fulfill the mandate of your life, that your life would leave a mark. My greatest prayer for you today is that your life would leave a mark upon the earth. So, Father, I pray for these people today listening. I know there's great callings and deposits setting inside. There's ministry for them to do. You have gifted them to fulfill the calling and you have a ministry awaiting for them. You are preparing a people for them as you have prepared them for a people. God, I ask you to begin to open the prison doors that have restricted so many of the great calling and giftings they have that ministry could be formed upon the earth. I release them this day from the bondages of what men have tried to make them to be. And I say, come forth now out of your caves of Adulium and out of your prison like Joseph and out of the prison like Peter, and as all of them saw what they were carrying and began to carry it into the earth, may your life leave a mark as their lives left a mark upon the earth. Father, I bless this people today, and I thank you for their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if this was a blessing to you, please share this with others. Uh, I'm just trying to encourage the body of Christ. I'm trying to bring some perspectives when I do these short videos to encourage you today. I plan on doing a lot more of these. I'm hoping maybe to even get to the point where I'm doing these daily. And just God bless you today and have a great Christmas as a season is upon us. And fulfill the calling, fulfill the, get the gifts activated in you and go do ministry. Leave your mark on the earth. When we get to heaven, we'll talk about what we've done. God bless you today and thank you.